So you've decided to do a statistics-based math IA. How do you go about this? What do you need to include? What do you need to exclude? I'm Tom, this is Like a Math Class, let's get to it. First off, I wanna ask you, why are you doing statistics? Maybe you are curious about some kind of relationship between two things. Maybe you want to explore possible cause and effect of something. Maybe you just like to analyze data. And finally, you think this is gonna be the easiest math IA to do. You might be mistaken about this because it's not necessarily the easiest math IA to do. But before we get into all of the bits and pieces that you're gonna need for a statistics IA, I wanna talk about really what the focus of the IA is. What the IA is all about is your thinking and understanding. That is the most important thing. This is all about documenting your thinking process, your understanding of the mathematics that you're using. As I just said, it's about the process of getting from the raw data to the conclusion. That's what you're trying to do. How do we get from all of this data to whatever conclusion you have? Now, it's rarely about the answer. You may think that you're going to prove something, but you're not gonna really prove it because you know we're just scratching the surface on what you can do with statistics. But it's not necessarily about showing that you're right, it's showing about how you adapt and modify as you go through this process of analyzing data. So what does that mean? First, you should discuss the method of your data collection. So how are you gonna get your data? Are you getting it from a secondary source? Are you gathering the information? How are you getting this data? Are you thinking about if there are sampling issues? Is there any kind of bias or randomness that needs to be addressed? These are the things that you wanna talk about. These are all definitions that are part of the IA and a part of the IB curriculum. So using the, these aspects will only further enhance your IA. And then what is the appropriate model for the data and why? You know, you may be seeing some linear data. You may be seeing nonlinear data. How do you know that it's linear or nonlinear? It's not just, well, it looks like it. You need to show how you know it's linear or how you know it's not linear. And how can residual support your model? Residuals are often a key to understanding the relationship of your data. Residuals, when you think about your scatter graph, uh, and you maybe you've got a trend line on there, the residuals is the distance from your data points to the data line. And if you look at all of those little distances, if you graph those, they tell you information about your data. So you're gonna wanna look into residuals as well. It's, it's not necessarily taught in the curriculum, but it's a really great add-on to a statistical IA. So now you have either linear data or nonlinear data. Let's look at those two data types and what you might wanna do with those. If your data is linear, here are some things that you should be discussing. Your interpretation of R, remember R is your correlation coefficient. So you're look, looking at direction, strength, linearity. You're talking about the slope. You're gonna be using that in context. As this data value goes up, this data value goes up. So you're talking about the relationship of these two things. And you might wanna even consider the y-intercept. What does it mean when you've got the y-intercept? Where is your starting point? Where is your data beginning and where is it going to? Then you're gonna to wanna to look at outliers. When we talk about univariate data, you're working out five number summaries, maybe you're doing box and whisker plots, possibly even doing a bar graph, but that's really surface level. Your IA, your statistical IA, should not focus on univariate data. You can use it to analyze a part of your data, but it should not be the focus of your data. You should be looking at bivariate data, where two data values are related. So now when you're looking at outliers, you're gonna see a scatter plot and you're gonna see data points, you may see data points that don't fit or that they seem like they don't fit. What are you gonna do with those? You can't just exclude them to make your data better. You need to have valid reasons. You need to be doing the analysis. This is part of that process that you're explaining, that you're showing your understanding for uh, the IA. Why or why not are you including these uh, outliers? And I wanna, I'm gonna show you an example about why we're gonna look at outliers in a second. Are there any confounding variables? Confounding variables are variables that are impacting your data that aren't directly in your data. You wanna look at, are there any issues with predictions or extrapolation? Predictions are when you're using your trend line within your data set, within the domain of your data set, Extrapolations are when you start going outside the domain of your data set. What kind of issues are you gonna have with that? And then finally, 
Is there any causation? Just because you've got a high correlation doesn't mean you've got high causation. So you want to make sure you're addressing that as well. So now what happens if your data is non-linear? Well, if it's non-linear, now you should discuss what curved model best represents your data. Are you looking at a quadratic model? Are you looking at an exponential model? Are you looking at a part of a trigonometric model? If you cut each of these graphs, half of a quadratic, exponential, part of a trigonometric function, they're all going to look very similar for a short bit. So which one, based on what you know about the different models, are going to be a better fit for that and why. So that's that's why I say, how do you know which model best represents and did you try different models? So you definitely want to talk about how you're trying these different models and why you're including or excluding these different models uh, based on your data. Does it make sense to linearize your data? Linearizing your data with logarithms is a way that you can make your curved data straight. So you apply logarithms to either your X values or your Y values or both and you can linearize that data. And that's, a, that's another process that you can look into for your statistics IA. And here's something that you really want to keep in mind. Correlation, the correlation coefficient R is only for linear data. So if, you, if you've got some curved data and you're applying that R value to it, it's not actually valid because it's checking the linearity of the data. So you can't use that correlation with that, uh, with that curved data. So that's why you want to check to see if it's curved using residuals and all the other things that we've been talking about. So let's see what outliers in linearization of curved data looks like. I'm not sure which textbook this is from, but this is an example where here we've got a data set of body weight in kilograms of animals or mammals. And here we've got the brain weight in grams of those same animals. So here we're looking, wow, this elephant is way out here. That's an outlier. That doesn't fit my data very well. I might, and, and I'm getting an R value of 0.86. Well, that's still good, but I wonder what would happen if I took that data item out. Oh gosh, now it's making my, my R value worse. Maybe I shouldn't have taken that out because I want my R value to be really strong, but maybe your data isn't actually linear. So if you take logarithms of both the body weight and the brain weight, look at this data set now. Your R value is now 0.96. This still has the elephant in there. The elephant is actually this one up here, but it's bringing it into linear. You know, logarithms are the inverses of exponentials, right? They're in the inverses of curved data. So what it's doing is it's taking this curved data and it's flattening it out. It's, it's, it's linearizing that data. So now you can use your R value. Now you can use a linear trend line. And now you can make some more predictions. Now you can discuss the data a little bit more in line with what we've been talking about in the course. Now we get to what should you not put in the statistical IA. Well, the first thing is the coefficient of determination, which is the R squared value, unless you know what you're talking about. What is the coefficient of determination? What does it tell you about your data? I can't tell you how many times I've seen my students even using the R squared value and not the R value. They're getting the two confused. They're thinking coefficient of determination is the same thing as correlation coefficient. They're not the same thing. They tell you two different things about your data. So you want to make sure you're using it wisely or don't even bring it up if you're not sure what it does. And then you should exclude tables upon tables of calculations to either get the correlation coefficient or the regression line or whatever. Use technology to your advantage. It's not about putting all of this stuff in here and then, and then summing it up and then taking the square root of it and then adding it and then taking the squaring it and all those other things. We don't care about that. We've got technology to do that. What we want to see is your thinking and understanding. We want you to talk about what you know about this data, what you know about the process of analyzing the data. We don't care about the spreadsheets and spreadsheets that you do to calculate this. So um, use technology to your advantage with, the, with those calculations, but then maybe manually or by hand or with your own analysis and your own models, you can build possibly your curved values. You can talk about the, uh, how you linearize the data. 
Those are different calculations that you can use in the IA. And again, the biggest thing, let me go back to the very beginning, the process of getting from your raw data to your conclusion, that's what we want to know. That's what we want you to write about. You might have an initial hypothesis and it doesn't work out after you go through all this. That's okay. We just want to know what was the process that you went through to get there. That's what we want to hear or see, I guess. That's what we want to read. So that's the statistics IA. Now, if you're thinking, wow, that's pretty intense, um, maybe I don't want to do a statistics IA, make sure you check out this video where I go through the whole process that I take my classes through on how to come up with an IA topic. This IA should be custom built to you and your interests. It shouldn't be, I want to do something on statistics. It should be, here's the idea that I have. Does statistics fit to it? And if it does, awesome. If it doesn't, then check out our other videos where we talk about how you might do a modeling IA, how you might use probability for your IA, and so on. So I hope that was helpful. If it was, give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, so that way they can get some benefit from this too. And I will see you in the next video.